The reality is the conversation around the upfront has really changed. Um, while supply and demand, what we're buying, how much we're paying for it, is still a big part of the conversation and what drives close to, what, a $20 billion marketplace, there's a lot more conversation around data, tech, and measurement that happens in the upfront that impacts the rest of the year. So at Assembly, we look at video holistically. Um, so the conversation is not just about pre-upfront, but about how to invest for the rest of the year. So when we talk to our clients, there are specific trends we were looking at. So in addition to linear ratings, we look at the growth of digital video, specifically in areas such as over the top and video on demand. We also this year looked at the growth of live events, including sports, how could we take advantage in these opportunities, and also the evolution of measurement and areas that provide new transaction or different transaction models, such as audience-based buying. These are all areas we feel are important as part of the upfront conversation and the rest of the year. The Open AP Consortium is considered a good step forward in general mm -hmm. for uniform audience targeting. Uh, what's been your experience with audience targeting to date? So the concept of audience-based buying is not especially new, right? It's been around for a few years now and from digital even longer. Uh, we started testing in this area this year and we find the conversation has changed a little bit um, even this year versus last year. Two years ago, a conversation with a network would involve, yes, we can reach your audience. So for example, Expedia is one of our clients. The networks could say, I will reach a frequent traveler who travels six times a month However, I'll guarantee you on adults 25-54. So to us, that's essentially not saying much because um, we can do the same thing, to be honest. But now the conversation is the network saying, all right, we will guarantee you on that frequent traveler. Um, so that is changing the transaction model that, that um, you know, that's something we're excited about. Um, however, for us to really see success in this, we are looking at two specific things. One is how close to business outcome can you guarantee our delivery? And secondly, can you generate incremental value versus what we're already doing now? Because keep in mind, as the networks get more sophisticated, so do agencies. And specifically at Assembly, where we have analytics and tech at our core, we have a very good idea of how media is performing for us. We know how a spot that aired on a network at, let's say, 8 p.m. delivered from a business result perspective for the most part. And therefore, we're going to look for the networks to deliver incremental value beyond that to make something like audience-based buying work for us. So there's lots of growth in OTT viewing. What uh, are the advantages to your clients? And it doesn't involve dynamic ad insertion, things like that. So OTT is, um, you know, to is a complex, excuse me, complex landscape, right? So um, as we look at overall video landscape last year, there was growth of about 5% in video consumption. And we saw a lot of that came from connected TV and also in areas such as video on demand, video on demand, excuse me. So as we think about how we invest and the erosion of linear ratings, the question becomes where do we need to shift our money to? And within digital, there's a lot of um, options right now. So OTT is an area we're seeing of growth, but even within that, there you have choices, right? You have your devices, so whether it's through a Roku, a Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, the gaming consoles such as Xbox, PlayStation. You have your authenticated apps such as uh, Fox Now, Fox Sports Go. You have your paid apps such as CBS All Access. You have your standalone apps such as Drama Fever, Fever Hulu. Vivo, so forth, and some of them may be paid and not paid. And then now you have the newer landscape of virtual MVPDs, such as YouTube TV, Sling TV, Direct TV Now, PlayStation View, and the list goes on, right? So the question becomes, um, first of all, our, what we, when we talk to clients, we say, first of all, assess how your over-the-top exposure is right now. Because even when you buy Hulu, 70% of your impression is in connected TV environments. Secondly, how to complement that, what you should be buying, and then lastly, how you should be buying it, whether it's through Publisher Direct or there are other means of reaching this audience and over the top. So um, on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the best, where would you say we are in terms of cross-screen measurement? Hmm, good question. <laughs> As, um, I think we are probably at a four or five right now. Uh, I think there are solutions on from a screen by screen perspective and uh, 
if we use TV as kind of the, I don't want to say gold standard, but it's the most um, widely standardized uh, method, right? And then you have desktop, which is fairly standard. But then once you go into VOD, mobile, um, over-the-top environments, there are various methodology that could come into play. So, you know, we have been seeing some of the test results from what Nielsen is doing, especially around digital content rating. Uh, we're not seeing enough consistency to make it scalable yet, but we're encouraged that uh, Nielsen is approaching that direction and hopefully we'll see um, further results in the coming months. Last question. Um, safe environments in digital are in the headlines again. Um, what's your viewpoint on that? Is this not a new subject, but it is concerning? It's not a new subject. Uh, I think it's, it's been around for a while, and, and frankly, it's a lot of discussion in the digital landscape between transparency and other issues lately. But um, as far as brand safety is concerned, I think uh, for us, there are measures that can be put into place, but the issue is making it 100% foolproof. So I think, um, you know, as advertisers uh, get into the digital space, there has to be an understanding of how much of it can be controlled and how much that cannot be. And uh, by all means, we're not condoning some of the things that have happened, but we also have to realize it's not 100% preventable.